it's funny we were talking uh on the the last podcast that we did about how we met it was actually at a coffee shop or it, what coffee shop was it, it was local yeah 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 so the same way y'all met was how we met but <laughs> Robbie uh, told of course. me Robbie told me he was like <laughs> at that time he was like I'm gonna start charging you for rent because yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. meeting so much people <laughs> right. in the back We'll begin this one by introing ah, okay. our, yeah, main guest, our main guest, Marco. Marco from Mila. That's what I call him. And we have Alex Hilmi. But Alex Hilmi is helping us host also. Um, because I think we're all like business minded people and we do, we're in different fields to a certain aspect. Um, but I think a lot of what we want to talk about also in this take is just really Marco and your business. Um, so we first met, I believe, I know you met other friends of mine when you worked at, you know, North Star Mall and then you had, you were working at the farmer's market at um, Pearl. Um, but then I, you know, was crazy into coffee. So then I come across your shop and that's how we met. But first of all, let's go into like, you know, starting Mila. I think back then we were both working into or 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 passion or, or careers because I remember you being a, a local, just sitting out there with your computer all the time, you know, when I would go. And that was when I was at the mall, you know, too. Like I kind of recognized you before I started at, at the farmers. I was like, man, I always kind of see you out there, you know, with your computer working. And that's when you were doing just probably freelancing on, yeah. on your own, right? right? Yeah. Like just doing your own stuff i was freelancing at local and people at that time you know there's not young kids working on their computer during you know college hours or school hours i probably looked like a high school kid at the time but yeah. um i was just at local you know editing and stuff and that's kind of how i started my my thing but into your thing so at that time you didn't you had mila Right, Mila was, or you were still working at North Star and Farmers. I was just still working at North Star Mall when when I when I started coming around all this area, you know, here, finding local coffee and what, two thousand ten or eleven, maybe you know, uh, but maybe two thousand ten it was a, a, a Sonterra area, and I was at the mall and I came back and pitched the idea to my boss. On that time, I was like, man, I really like what they do. These guys like. Check out this equipment, check out these machines, like it's awesome, it's cool. But then my boss, he was just kinda like, Man, we're at the mall. I don't think that's gonna sell over here, you know. I don't I'm like, Whoa, we're right next to Saks Fifth Avenue, you know, these people like good stuff. Like, we should do something around here like that. So it never happened and I ended up doing it, I guess, you know. <laughs> what well, whatever I wanted, you know, like yeah, I think it's I think it's fascinating whenever it's like, hey, like you feel the you feel inspired to do like you want to progress in your in your field, right? Yeah. Your craft, we we I can I think I can respectfully say that it's coffee. Yeah. You know, it's it's making this coffee in the way lattes, you know, espresso, um, in the way that people feel that it was made with tender love and care. Um, and that's why, you know, in being Mila being in the Bible belt of coffee on Broadway, um, you see there's so much coffee that you can have on Broadway, but you know, you pass by Mila and there's like, you know, lines ten deep, you know, hey. twenty twenty and twenty minute line to get Mila. Um but I wanna go back more into like the fact that like you wanted to progress in this coffee career, but the lack of not the support, like not lack of support, but just lack of progression that you know your old boss wanted to do to where you just had to create it. Um, where did what influenced you to create Mila? Not just that, but like, what did, was there anything else that influenced you? People. Um, um, I think I think my own passion for coffee. You know, I was like, I really 
like what we do at the mall, you know, and then when I get those customers that will come around me and, and wanted me to make like a, a good cup of coffee or they ask me questions about what kind of beans do you use or what, what do you do this, you know, I will always get excited about it. And I was like, man, I think this is what I like. I, I like to do this, you know. Uh, but then we had a big menu on our cafe and we had a few things that I didn't like to sell, but then, you know, it wasn't mine. So I just, at the same time, I had a, a business to run with the rest of my people in there and then um, the kids, because uh, we just had like, you know, a bunch of kids uh, at the mall, but it was fun. You know, that's what it kind of like got me the idea of like, I think I can do this because after two years working for my boss, um, I kind of became the manager and, you know, like I had a lot of responsibilities. I was already working like long hours. I was like, man, you know, one day I would love to do this for my own, making it really nice with like a, like I said, good equipment and, and all that and good beans. And, and then it happened, you know. So I, who, I did who, it. who is, um, so where did the name come from? Uh, my, the name comes from my daughter. Mila, that's uh, that's my eight-year-old daughter. Uh, she's business eight already. She's eight, wow. dude. Yeah, and my business was seven and a half years. You know, so it's like right there. Something funny. My son Luca was born a year after mm -hmm. the same day that I opened Mila Coffee, like the first March first. I claim it like as our anniversary because it was the first Monday, March first, two thousand sixteen, when I finally parked after our soft opening on a Friday mm -hmm. and like hanging out with, and a Saturday Mario will bring like the, uh, like we had like a few li little businesses and very goods were there, you know, it was just like, we just started vibing. It was so cool, you know, it was so fresh that weekend. But then Monday, March 1st, it was when I actually got there at like 5.30 in the morning, set up and said, we'll see what happened, you know? And then it was dark, it was lonely. <laughs> But I was there, you know, I was like, all right, let's do it, see, and then just continue to do it, you know. So, so I, sorry to, to Go ahead. jump in, but um, I am curious. So your boss wasn't too, too keen on you wanting to do what you're doing now back at your, your, your job there. But uh, how did he or she take that whenever you were like, I'm leaving? <laughs> yeah, I mean... It was a bittersweet. It was a bittersweet, but um, it was. It wasn't that they. I don't think if I if they wanted to see the picture of what Mila is now, they probably would have been like, "Oh yeah, let's do it" or or some. But yeah, they just had just kicking themselves in their own yeah, ass. Yeah. But they just had. <laughs> it was just. It was just a big business. People, you know, mm -hmm. they had not just one business, but like jewelries and like construction remodeling companies and stuff like that. So it was just a lot on his hands for him to be like, ah, I really want to put money and make it make it this or, you know. Hmm. So I guess being at the mall too, like the rent is expensive, you know. Yeah. A lot more expensive than like, you know, it's like seven, $8,000 a month or something like that for what we had. So, I mean, you know, I just never, uh, I do really great coffee. I'm a decent business owner, you know, but but uh, but there is people behind it. They make get get more a lot into numbers and things like that. I will just since I started, I was always like, no, I want the best. I want this, whatever it costs, we're gonna get it done that way, and then we'll see if we have a little change at the end to survive. But let's get it like this because this is the way we have to do it, or you know, but. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel it was like a quality versus quantity kind of thing? You were saying that that I, I don't want to mass produce X type of beans. It's like you're saying I want the the proper equipment, the proper supplies kind of thing. Yeah, I think it, it was uh, about the, more than anything like the equipment, you know, because some people think that a $15,000 espresso machine, two group head, it's, it's a lot of money. You know, it's like, this is a riches. Why would you going to pay that much? But... But they make great coffee, coffee, right? Make espresso. Um, they're just, it's just about equipment and things like that. I would say more than, than, than having the beans or like sure. to buying like the best beans out there or something. Cause best beans, they all becomes a, I guess as a personal, a 
personal opinion, I guess, when mm -hmm. you're tasting it, when you you have different roasting or some people like darker roaster than like lighter. And, right. you know, there's just a lot of palettes out there that they would think something is better than the other one. Yeah. So Alex and I but, were talking about like, you know, really. And I think that's where kind of beyond the craft kind of comes full circle is really talking about those things that, you know, us as creatives, business owners, um, entrepreneurs do where we care about our craft. And I think based on, you know, you're like experiencing the way you serve coffee and, and the way you, you work in the, in the service industry was kind of like the, the infancy stages of me conceptualizing this idea of beyond the craft and aligning myself with those people. Right. Like, yeah. I don't want to go to a Starbucks that's just going to like press a couple buttons, pump it out and get you on your way. Yes, it's going to take me two minutes and I'm going to save two minutes of my day. But I'd rather wait in line for 20 minutes and have that 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 service from Marco, like have that warmth. And also like you can taste it in the in the coffee. You can have that consistency and yours. I think it wasn't all about scale for you and it wasn't all about pumping as much coffees as we can it was more about the quality of it and i think that's why people are like you know 20 20 minute lines yeah I mean? it still it is is there is there a main concern to keep a good quality you know with with the with the people with their coffee you know but most of all with with how we um, interact with people how we deliver the product you know i got asked many times like hey man can you uh be on DoorDash, can you do this and all that? And I'm like, I mean, do you want your coffee to get to you 10 minutes later when it's not going to be good, you know? Food like with, with hot, like for hot lattes and things like that. I mean, just come when you can and right. we'll, we'll be here, you know? <laughs> but I don't want to send you a coffee that's not going right. to be great after a 10 minute or five minute, you know? I didn't even realize the DoorDash but, aspect. Mm -hmm. No, they, I mean, these days there's all the liveries, uh, DoorDash, um, I mean, all the platforms right there, you know, they hit you often. They're like, hey, man, you want to be in here? Right. Let's do it. People ask for you, this and that. But, I mean, it's not that I'm like, I'm a stuck up. Because, you right. know, it's just about the consistency of the hot drink that is not mm -hmm. going to travel well. Right. You know, like unless it's a drip coffee or something like that. Right. But most of the people wants to get a latte or or, or a right. nice cappuccino or something like that, you know, a nice cappuccino. Right. right. And I mean, I will just the way the the specialty coffee is these days is an experience of going somewhere, sit down, you know, yeah. taste it fresh. Might as well if you're going to spend five dollars, you right. know, in a cup, just tell me. A, take a moment. Alex and I talked about it on a recent you know, podcast we did. Tell me a little bit on your take on just the loneliness in business. Um, well, it was it was a hard start. It was a hard like six months, I would say, you know, just because I didn't see sometimes many people's, you know, it was I would get a rush of like a 20 customer, 30 customer a day, you know, and then after that, oh, an eight hour shift, that's nothing, right? So I was sitting there and find something to do. The weekends were fun because Burgage was there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, it was, but but the weekdays, like that Monday to Friday, sometimes was lonely, you know? The, uh, Broadway wasn't what it is these days. It was, it was, I mean, it's, it's been popping, but I feel like it's been popping more these past, I don't know, four or five years, you mm -hmm. know, than what it was eight years ago. It was, you know, but, but no, I mean, it's, what are, what psychologically things that you yes. kind of have to pro, pro, progress not progress um, persevere through? Yeah, it was it was tough the beginning, but it wasn't as scary though because um, I had the support of my family behind. You know, um, I was still living with mamas, but not living with mamas. I had my apartment in the back. You know, I pay rent to my mom, <laughs> and but I still you know it was really it was a uh, and the start, you know, it was my beautiful wife was helping me, you know, still working 
part time over at Nordstrom Mall. She worked at Dillard's. So, yeah, so she was just still there, you know, until Luca was born. Then she left, and that was what, a year and a half? Mm. But a year and a half later into the business, that we were doing better than, I was like, well, you know, daycare, because kind of a lot, you know, so it's like, well, it's either you keep working or stop working and you can take take care of the, take, take care of the kids and I go to work. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was like that. It was, it wasn't tough. It wasn't, I mean, it was tough, but it wasn't as scary, like I said, right? Like in a way. Right. Tell me about that influence that they had on you, your mom and your wife. Well, they were the big pushers for me to do me like, you know, I'll probably if it was just being on my own, I would probably would have done it, you know. But my mom was one of the ones that, no, you, you got to do it, man. Like, you, I see it on yourself. When, when you're at the mall, everybody think it's your business, you know. You know everybody in the mall, just like I know people over here just because I just talked to them, you know, how I met you, like, right. years ago, you know. I met you, you know, everybody just kind of, like, out there, like, and then... My wife, she's like, well, I think you can start it. You know, you got the charisma to talk to people, and 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 I think you can do it. So that's why it kind of got me. You know, I, I wanted to comment on the charisma aspect because um, it's funny. We were talking uh, on the the last podcast that we did about how we met. It was actually at a coffee shop. Or it, what coffee shop was? It, it was local. Yeah. 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 So the same way y'all met was how we met, but. <laughs> uh, Robbie told of me. Course. Robbie told me he was like <laughs> at that time he was like I'm gonna start charging you for rent because yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. meeting so much people <laughs> right. in the back. Like the back of local was like he, he was office wrong. right there. <laughs> but so, so by the back restroom, to the, the, the charisma and the bar because <laughs> like so especially because I had a business right next to to yours um, uh, over off Broadway and it's funny like seeing the different type of client uh, clientele or I guess customer basis that you'd have like you'd have you know kids to geezers <laughs> and you'd have people that were completely like suited up like banker looking individuals to yeah. to people that you know have face tattoos and yes and you you said something a second ago about how when you were in the previous location before you started this that that you had a certain sense of ownership, even mm-hmm. at a place that yeah. that you didn't own, yeah. and people were like, "Oh, that's that's so, Marco's business." <laughs> but I would I would be standing in line, or I'd be you know adjacent to it or something. Look over, and man, that's like, wow, people. Yes, they're coming for your your product because it's it's great. Don't get me wrong, but they're also coming for for you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I felt like you are your own brand. As far as Mila is concerned, I, that that's what I try to push it at the beginning. In a way, you know, I was like concerned about being out there, being involved with the community, you know, in a mm-hmm. way of like doing rides with the people, going at night, talk to, um, like you said, people with suits. If mm-hmm. you know, if they want to have a conversation, I try I, I pitch what I kind of know and what I can say, and you know, and and they taught me a lot of things too Mm -hmm. you know they taught me a lot of stuff and like you said from people from tattoos you know that are up on the face there are like persons that you know they probably have errors in the past Mm -hmm. or something you know but we all here trying to do better and trying to get a a better you know situation out of it or but no it's the charisma I think is 100% important and and whatever you do, you know, you gotta wake up motivated and and try to try to get the best promotion out of yourself, you know. Right. Because I think that's a, a. I love the topic that Alex brought up. That I've tried to understand why people operate those businesses like they own it. I think it's such a beautiful thing, and it says a lot about the person. When it's like, you don't even own the business, but you operate and your actions are in a way that you do. Yeah. And that says a lot about a person um, and, I mean, their character at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I still carry some customers from Nordstrom Mall. They're 
internationals. They come from Mexico, you know. They uh, they knew I opened this business and we still friends, you know. We got kind of friends on Facebook somehow and then I know them and, you know, or this family from where I'm from, Veracruz, you know. Mm -hmm. They will come every Christmas to North Shore Mall. I didn't keep the relation with them, but <laughs> I, I, I was, they were still every, every year they will come, you know. And then look for me. Hey, Ganda, hey, what's going on? This and that. And they just get coffee, you know. We had like sandwiches and stuff. They would right. eat right there. It was it was so cool. Always, you know, it was a really good time. Back in the day, the mall was popping and it was I felt it was different than, mm -hmm. than what it is now. And just see I go to the mall and I see a lot of cheesy stuff and somehow, you know. Uh I felt back there it was more like high end quality stores. Right. You know, very high end quality stuff. But now of right. course there is a lot of competitions with the internet sales yeah. and all that, right? right? So tell me a little bit about um I love the aspect that you know, I had this this thought when I was younger and I could never get hired at like a Chili's or like an IHOP and I really desired to work there. Tell me about the desires you had when you wanted to work at these these awesome shops in San Antonio and um, that had those machines and that equipment. But like, what was holding you back? Man, I mean, back in the day, was it what, 2010, 11, when I find out about the local coffee here, right next to Bike Roll, right? Um, and then I just thought it was amazing. I, I was like, man, like this, People look so nice, you know. People around there, they're all this studying or drinking this like amazing coffee and like, a, you know, uh, pour overs and things like that. I was like, man, I think that's so cool. And that was so new back then, you know, 2010. It was, it was still started in San Antonio. Uh, and then, and then I knew one day I wanted to do that. Like that's. I, I was at North Sermo doing what I was doing, which it was coffee too. We had a, 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 a mechanic machine and everything, put the filters, we had to tamp and do our own stuff. But we still had a lot of cheesy stuff around that I didn't want. And I was like, well, we still had to do it. So I was like, bah. I was passionate, but you know, it was like a little, but then, but then my situation of, of my, my Im immigration situation couldn't let me work at a, one of the places like that, you know? And thank God they didn't let me to do it because then that's what I ended up doing my own, you know? I was, ended up doing my own thing because I didn't have a social security to go apply to to any of the shops around or, you know? Um, so I was like, man, I think my mom, she was the one. She's like, well, do it, you know? You, just, you can use my stuff and you can do it and... You can just, you can put it under my name and all that. So that's how the dream has started, you know? So like, the, the the charisma thing we we're talking about, also, like, that's a huge testament, I think, to your humility. Uh, because you, you could have, you could have been upset that you mm -hmm. had certain limitations in mm -hmm. front of you. And you, it was like either, okay, you throw on the towel or you hunker down mm -hmm. and say, you know, I'm actually going to go do my own thing, you right. know, with the support of your, your mom and everything like that. But that's, that's not common. I mean, I, I know it's mm -hmm. second nature hey, to you right. because you did it, but that's pretty, pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. All I had, it was a, uh, a passport, you know, uh, a credit card. And then, and I was, uh, I was like, man, like, I really would love to go work, uh, uh, at a place. And, and do it, but I knew I had that limitation, you know? Like, I mean, at the job at North Shore Mall, mm -hmm. I would get paid, okay, you know? Like, but right. I, if I'll probably go work at one of these places, they will probably kind of pay me about the same and I will work probably a little less. So I was like, man, maybe I can learn right. a lot more and, you know, but that was a limitation. So I was like, you know, I think I could do it on my own. Right. All I need to do is apply for an eating number and, you know, mm -hmm. pay my taxes and that's it, you know? Right. So I it's, figured it out. <laughs> it's one of Somehow. those things where the the complication or the, the stump in the road is actually the blessing. Yes. You it, know, it, like it's, it's not kind of forced perspective. Yeah. You, it's not the you didn't let that stop you. It, you know what I mean? 
Yes, yes, um, for sure. I mean, and we got to keep thinking that way, you know, like every time we have like a little mm -hmm. something on the road that, that kind of bumbles down or something, you know, we got to got to keep trying to to make it happen because, man, it was I really like I said, I, I really if it wouldn't be for that situation, I probably would have gone work uh, any other place and then keep working and who knows what yeah. would have happened, you know, but right. but in this case, you know, not having a, a social security to go apply somewhere else or have a, a job like that. I was like, well, I think, you know, I'll do this since I wanted to create right. a business and, and try to do it, you know. The trajectory and the growth going from, you know, a 60 square foot, basically a cube yeah. or a little rectangle <clears throat> box that you were in to now being part of a much larger ecosystem. And what I loved working with the team at, at Hickson and at Make Ready, because I've been working with them for years at this point, not just on that project, but it's like they were talking to, to me about, about Mila before I think they were talking to you about Mila. And it was because they recognized, I think what a lot of people see Right. about you as an individual and about what your company as a whole offers. And they were like, we we absolutely have to have him as a part of, of what we're doing. And they could have gone to the Starbucks easily. It could have been the, the CVS or mm -hmm. something like that, but it, yeah. it wasn't. And uh, so I'm really, really proud of, of what you're doing. And I'm very curious to see what, like how this, the culmination of what you're you're currently doing and then what the next chapter is uh but no i think you you've you've taken the right steps at the right time and uh listened in the right ways but what you're currently doing in this in this new brick and mortar uh i feel is a is a very intelligent move it it took time you know and and thanks to john and and hunter because they i don't know what they saw me <laughs> but they will they will come often and and John will come comes every morning you know yeah. such a humble guy man like gosh like he's he's a really nice person yeah. you know and and he comes and and he saw us being open the hours that we said we're gonna be open and he saw how we I guess talk to our customers and we became friends of him and and then now he put us in this beautiful spot right there on make ready it's yeah. it's amazing it's unbelievable you know like amazing bike lane you know yeah no, it looks great last time you know, i saw you everything getting a coffee there yeah it's it's just everything is amazing around make ready with, with what it's about to happen with all the brewery and the, the food hole you know it's just gonna be massive oh it's gonna be a, a complete you game know, changer like, especially for it, that, that that broadway corridor that you guys are referencing mm -hmm. um unfortunately and, i have to go guys you know but oh yeah thank you very much. We'll have. Uh, good to see you. We'll keep on talking. Bye. All right. But Alex Scott's business yeah. stuff. But I do want to talk more into like what Alex talked about um, when he brought up John and Hunter and he talked about, I think you, you know, but you told me and it kind of aligned with what he said also is that they saw the type of person you are. And what I love about that, what you told me is that they saw that you were open, you know, rain or shine, cold or hot, like you were there. And it's one of the aspects of like, when you think no one's looking, people are actually looking. Yeah. And the things that you do when you're probably unmotivated or it's cold outside or you're tired, um, people like, you know, John and Hunter are going to see those things and provide opportunity, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next month, maybe not next year, but over time, those things that you do in the dark will come to light. And thankfully it did, you know, so talk, let's talk more into that where they were customers just with you. Yeah, I know. So today, John, every morning, you know, he either comes to the truck or, or to the new make ready, you know. But yeah, I mean, he's the main guy out there with uh, with Hunter, and they approach us and they were like, "Man, 
we really love what you guys do and how you guys do it and we would love to offer you this opportunity and he, they pitched me but the idea when that make ready was just a, a lot you know an empty lot over there and i mean i was like yeah let's do it you know let's do something over here they want me to move me like coffee at the beginning you know like the truck they're like we're thinking about you possibly moving over there you know there's going to be a massive the massive construction in the and the, the coming up years and this and that and then when I saw the lot and I saw what construction they were gonna do I was like man let's just do a building you know since you guys are doing this massive renovation already I mean you guys can totally do a building and set it up and that's the way it kind of happened you know so it was like a little bit of a, both you know yeah Cause like I said they just wanted to put it in a slab of concrete and bring a trailer Put it in here and you know you can set up uh, I, I wanted to have something where i can have plumbing and and have everything already set up to, to right equipment which hit is, the next step which is good yeah, yeah. um I, and then you're I, I think it's like that corner is like tr like s traditional san antonio like just pete's right there you know you're right there i i like it's like, man, is there a better spot? Man, it's amazing now. We're into four months in. Um, the the people that that we get to see in the mornings and people and people around there by by Pete's Taco, you know, and everything. It's amazing. It's really good. And what's coming, it's yeah. it's even better, you know. We'll be able to open at nights. Um, Idol Brewery, the food hall, you know. It was just. I think it'll be a really good couple of, of of five years, you know, for sure. Right. And there. So who broke the mm -hmm. news? Did you, did you, I mean, I know you go to Pete's Taco a lot, but it's like, is that something that you, you told them about that, hey, I'm, we're thinking about moving over here? Well, we, I, I ideally was thinking, man, this is very close from Mila, you know, from my truck. I was like, man, I don't, do I want to do it? Do I'm going to split the customers, something will happen. But then at the same time, I started seeing how many traffic pits carries. And I was like, man, they do great. You know, they've been in there for over 15 years now. And I was like, well, if they're there, you know, I think we can make it too, you know, there's already a traffic and, and customers from them. And, and yeah, I mean, it's happening. It's yeah. really good. Hell yeah. Tell me. Yeah. I love I love the I love the story about I love the the idea that you talked about you know where at the time when you created Mila like you didn't have papers right so you kind of had to create this thing for yourself of what you imagined or envisioned your life you know using better equipment and you know having having a community like when you walked into local and you saw those things and you were inspired and you're like i want this how do i create it and then you did create it from the lack from not being able to apply at these places because you didn't have citizenship tell me on how you can influence other people in that way that might be walking around as using it as a crutch when you could have used it as a crutch also that you didn't have papers. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's a, uh, it's for sure an an obstacle in front of you, and somehow, but uh, but it wasn't really never a uh, a huge obstacle, you know, because I learned to live with that, you know, for over eight years or so, you know. Um, no, actually, twelve, twelve years. Cause I've been here fourteen and recently got my residency about two years ago so so yeah about 12. but before i didn't know the business you know the person nurse her mom ran me off with a 1099 so it was it was good you know i always pay taxes though <laughs> that's, that's the thing you gotta do <laughs> so that way you can count and all that and you can fix your papers later but but yeah i mean it was it was a good obstacle in my life you know because because of that i was able to create my 
my own stuff, you know. Let, let, let me tell you, there's a story about I, I went and applied to a coffee place here in San Antonio. And and it was a new one. It was up there by La Cantera, you know. Um, I saw the opportunity. I was like, man, I'm going to go. They have a beautiful equipment. It's going to be fun. And I was like, I just go and try. And then whenever they ask me for my stuff, I just tell them, you know. But I show them first that I can do it and I can be a good employee. So, you know, they'll probably be like, oh, we don't want to lose this guy. Let's just put him under the table or something. But, but yeah, I was up there for like what week and a half. And then after that, I, I told them, you know, oh, so they needed to pay me. And they're like, hey, we were waiting on your your stuff. And I was like, man, you know what? I'll tell you the truth. I don't I don't have one like this. This is happening. Yeah, I guess they, they were like, man, we can do this. There's some investors from Mexico, so they really needed to show that they were paying some some people good, you know, creating jobs and all that. Right. So. But yeah, and then that that encouraged me more to actually be like, well, you know, it's so fun to do this, like so cool having a nice coffee shop and everything and 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 all the aspects behind and everything, but but I was like, now how can I do it in a in an affordable way, you know, cuz I didn't have a million a thousand dollars in my account to be able to to make it happen, but but I was like, well, maybe, you know, we start seeing a lot of coffee places popping up, Indie Coffee Theory. Um, uh, well, this is the only two that I remember. Um, well, it was another one, maybe a truck. Now it was probably Indie Coffee and Theory at the time, you know. And I was like, well, I mean, it looks cool. Their concept is cool, you know. They like to skate. I like to skate, you know. They're, they're cool people. I was like, man. I think I can buy a trailer and and just kind of create everything around it and create a story and and create some type of branding you right. know behind it because yeah I, everything that comes a Mila and all the designs and all that it's some of my idea that I pitch to these designers they make it happen but everything. It's my decision if I put it out there or not. You know, right. I just everything. Nobody works on my branding right. or anything. I decided right. to do it. I the, probably ask opinions to my wife right. and this and that, but yeah, I try to yeah. always keep it. You know, because what we talked about also is that a lot of these, like in that in the coffee network in in San Antonio, people worked at these these more craft coffee shops and then if they wanted to start their own thing they were able to start their own thing but i guess when you started your own thing were you in the network already because you didn't necessarily work at the shops and maybe didn't have the advantage of like already making face with people that enjoy craft coffee like exactly. like other people did right because you couldn't work in those shops so whenever you began, Mila, like, how were you able to, like, be accepted into that, like, coffee culture? Yeah, I know. It's, I basically created my own, my own brand and, and name, you know, by going to a lot of our competitions, you know. And until today, I mean, if, if I get a customer and it's their first time, I just kind of try to grip them and, like, you know, show him a little bit the our menu it's really not that complicated the coffee is really not that complicated it's pretty right. simple you just gotta know what you're gonna get and right and it's you know and and just be transparent and being try to explain it in a good way how how you can get how can you customize something for you to mm -hmm. be good for you? Maybe you're looking for a little bit more milk. Maybe you want a little bit more strong. And, right. You know, maybe you just want a black coffee or right. or something. You know, some people, they get really intimidated when they go to a to coffee place that, that has just these names. They're like, man, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. should I, what is a cortado? And they're scared to ask, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Because, um, I mean... There's some stories behind of, of people back there, you know, you walk into a, a specialty shop like that and some people think they're just too cool or they just don't want to talk to people too much, you know, like what did you, like, what did you get and you should know what you're getting, you know, like, but right. no, I mean, 
it's just talking one on one to right. customers. You know, right. I have some Starbucks people that I have made them change, transform into Miller lovers now, right? Like just by, by you know, just getting a nice latte with this or that, or right. or just getting just a nice latte, is simple. Right. You know, no, not getting so complicated. Or menu is pretty simple. Yeah. I think I think all of the coffee specialty coffee shops there are that there their their menu is pretty straightforward mm. you know right uh maybe these days it got a little bit wild with like a lot of um i don't know like matchas and like mm-hmm. you know like different things but uh i think if you go to these places it's because you know kind of what you're getting sometimes right. and what you're gonna go you know right. some people like to go places because like to drink their matchas right. or you know, but. back a little bit to the um, aspect of like, I mean, I love I love the fact that you didn't use that as a crutch, like not having, you know, papers to apply to these bigger shops. Do you think there are people that use that as a crutch um, that are like immigrants, you know, and do they use that aspect of not having papers as a crutch? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't, I think a lot of people, there is a lot of us that don't have papers, you know, out there and they're still in the, in the shadow somehow, you know, working jobs that they don't like or that they don't want to do, but they still got to do it because they got to make money. Some of them, they have to send money back home, you know? Uh, it's not all easy, you know. I was I was one of the lucky ones to be able to still have all my family here in San Antonio, you know. Pretty much all my family, my close family is here. Grandpa, grandma, mom, sister, you know. I'm very lucky. Um, then now my, my family, you know, my wife, my kids. But there is persons from Mexico that, or anywhere in, in, in America that, that come here to the States that, that don't have the possibility to, to redo what they love or to do what they would love to do. But, I mean, I would say you got to find that free time, right, to to get into what you like. It's mm-hmm. never too late. And, yeah. And then there is never not an obstacle to 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 do it, right, to, to not be pushed for what you believe or what you dream. Right. Right? Right. Like, no, I like that because it's really... It's really touching on the fact of like, um, of like creating and and then also like craft craftsmanship, of like finding out like what do you enjoy, you know like you were at North Star for those I think it was five years or so, and then really just in your in your craft, but you wanted to go beyond it, right? You didn't just want to like operate in this way. Um, you wanted to go beyond it and like have that 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 shop that you envisioned whenever you walked into like a local or an indie. Uh, I just think it's a it's a beautiful thing um, because people can people can use it as a crutch, you know. And I think it's special that you didn't use it as a crutch and you used it as like a uh, a thing to a thing to get you into your purpose, you know. It is. It is. It is a, a a blessing, and somehow coming from from a, I think if you're an immigrant, you know, you you already have an advantage. It, it's really not an obstacle sometimes, but it's an advantage of knowing how hard the life is out there, you know, and how how well we live here in the U.S., you know, with with AC units everywhere, you know, um, the. Public transportation is fine, you know. They're clean and right. and and it's not so crowded. At least not yet in San Antonio. You know, there's still a lot of opportunity here in in San Antonio for sure. And everything that is happening downtown right now, you know, everything from from here all the way to Southtown, right. right? All the media, all the platforms out there that right. that you can make your own thing if you really want to, you know. Right. Like. Is there, what are you excited about? Um, is Make Ready that main thing right now that you're excited about and seeing all that growth? 
I'm excited about keep uh, learning, keep growing, keep uh, keep being excited about waking up and making coffee. You know, because some sometimes you you get drained, right? You mm-hmm. you don't feel in it, and not every day is the same. Sometimes you just don't feel it, and those are the days where you have to remember yourself that five years ago you wanted to be there. You know, you wanted that, and then you still got to keep going. It's gonna be fine. Things are gonna be good. Um, and just finding finding that passion every morning, you know, to to want to do it. That's what that's what I'm about these days. What's what I want to do, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what I want to keep doing it. Um, and then eventually tran- transforming myself and evolving into like a more of a person behind business owner, you know, and just operating the things mm-hmm. from my house or for one shop that I have, you know, that mm-hmm. can be my office and I can delegate things to my the rest of my 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 guys out there right, you know because yeah. I have an awesome team and they're all great and everything you know but I, I, I'm young and still I don't know sometimes how to yeah. talk to them a hundred percent or not Leader, tell them leadership yeah do a leadership and and do all these things you know that needs to be done I just like I just get it knocked down myself later you know mm-hmm. instead of telling them like hey we need delegate, to do this right. and delegate things right right it's kind of hard sometimes, but or sometimes you don't want to hear you don't want to hear people's feelings by telling them something or you right. know, and then you do have to do it right. Like right. hard hard conversations make a better mm-hmm. um, relationship, a stronger. And that's what I want to do these days because right. I haven't done it so well for for many times, yeah. and and sometimes it gets it gets harder, you know, right. when you don't say it. At the first time when it happened so yeah i love that it's one of those things where it's surrounding yourself with with people that that are better than you in the business aspect of it or the leadership aspect of it it's surrounding yourself with those people so that they influence you and also enrich you and pretty much you do the same for them um but then also like learn uh, like learning right reading and learning those things on how to be a better leader and how to influence people and how to motivate people and then being okay with delegating it's it's a it's a it's a craft in in and of itself yeah i think if you find a really good employee you gotta make it your partner somehow right and bring it into a business somehow so he can also care as much as you care sometimes mm-hmm. right because i get it sometimes you you pay him hourly and everything and even so you give him this money or, or and all that you mm-hmm. know at the end of the day it's not their business and and even if they still trade it well then in some aspects right they still is it's not their baby right? right so yeah we gotta find those people and make him make yeah them partners. Man, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's falling into Bring it, it in, you, know, you it's, know i i think of it in a way as like if those people aren't in your circle yet and you haven't found those people then there's some the universe is telling you that there's something you need to do in order to prepare for those people and it's and it's almost like this how i feel the like i feel like we if we have this type of ownership or you know i've created this i'm in charge of my guys but i also they look up to me you mm-hmm. know so and somehow i'm creating a business but i also i creating jobs for them but i also need to teach him and mm-hmm. somehow be a better humor for them mm-hmm. you know better to, leader, to be yeah. ever better leader mm-hmm. to 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 inspire or right. to give him this picture of mm-hmm. of what they could do and how how they can do it and yeah. and of course they enable to do it yeah. you know it's one of those things where leaders um leadership is from the top down you know if at the end of the day, if you're frustrated with your team or something, it's a reflection of you. Like, you know, it's it's I mean, at the end of the day, when you when you're able to lead a team or whatever, at the end of the day, you have to understand it's everything's your fault. You know yeah. what I mean? And not being OK with it, but being OK with. Yes, everything is your fault and there's a solution for it. And how do I handle it? Do you yeah, know? Yeah. But. All that stuff is really just the universe telling us like, hey, like prepare because what you ask for when you ask for that business partner or whatever 
give them a piece of the business, like we have to be prepared for those people, you know, because the universe is not to give it to us whenever it doesn't think we're going to take care of it. Yeah. Um, it's a hard one, but, yeah. you know, with people and and with with all the all what's going on lately, you know, in the world and with, with all the politics and everything mm -hmm. around it and, you know, some people like yellow, some people right. like this. Uh, there were not the same ones all the time, so it's it's hard to make one idea and everybody think the same as right. you, right? And, and think so as well. I love, to wrap it up, I do love the aspect of like what we just previously talked about a couple minutes ago where you talked about, hey, five years ago, like this is what you wanted. And it was one of those quotes I saw a, long, a while back where it said, don't forget that what you're in today, you prayed for years ago. Yeah. And, and sometimes we do forget, you know, we take things for granted. Right. We go for months just like in a mode of like, I'm doing well, everything is fine, you know, we're great. And then some days we don't wake and feeling the same way right. and we're just like hating what we need to go do out there or, right. or something, you know, but hey, we, we got to get out there and get motivated and right. whatever you do, do it with, with some type of passion um, somehow, right? That's like yeah. where it's the best, you know? Yeah, passion, like, purpose, yeah. You can make money here selling bottled waters in the corner, you know? Like if, if you have the great attitude, people are going to stop, and then they're going to get a bottle of water from you, yeah. you know? So it's all it's all about how how much passion you put behind it, you mm -hmm. think, for no, sure. I love it. Like the rest is just universe giving you what you ask for it, what the energy that you put mm -hmm. put out, you know. It's it's all 100%, and hopefully we keep doing that. And hopefully I can, you know, stay strong and, and making it because we're all humans, and we also mess it up a lot, right? And then we have our darkness, and then we have our things, but we always, you know, try to hustle to get the best out of it and get out there and do it. Hell yeah, dude. Well, uh -huh. cheers. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hopefully we fun. covered everything. Yeah. I love it, dude.